Consent fix. Analyzing a browser native click fix style attack that hijacks OAuth consent grants. Listen, I feel like I had to make this video. I wanted to cover this because this is so cool. I gotta be honest, I was nerd sniped when I first read this and I wanted to play with it and I wanted to show it to you. So there's a lot of cool stuff I wanna dive into in this video. So I think the way that we'll structure it is first, I wanna walk through the article so you get that background context. Second, I'll show off a little cool little oh teeny weeny video demonstration. And then third, I'm just kinda gonna talk, gonna pontificate, speculate, think, and discuss a little bit more of the conversations to have with this sort of cool new thing. So this write-up was just previously released on December 11th, and they say, look, it's a phishing campaign using a new kind of attack technique that we're calling consent fix, combining OAuth consent phishing with a click fix style lure that leads to a whole account takeover in identity like your Entra ID or Microsoft 365 environment. So normally when you think of click fix, the original OG kind of traditional attack vector, that's a social engineering ploy that ultimately usually ends up in initial access on the endpoint. Like a victim, a user, poor end victim target ends up running malware on their computer and they're infected by that technique of, oh, a verify your human or click to prove I'm not a robot button. But this trick bridges the gap between that usual classic traditional local device on the endpoint attack to identity, the cloud, your online environment. They're saying that they saw some victims access a malicious or compromised website they actually got funneled to via Google search. And the attacker injects a fake Cloudflare turnstile like the Google reCAPTCHA, like the, oh, verify your human, I'm not a robot button. But they have something interesting here. They require you to type in your email address. And I guess these iterations have some fancy bells and whistles that would check, oh, if it's a valid email, if it's under a specific domain or maybe group of victims that they're trying to target in a given target list, then it would end up, oh, fluctuating, not letting it progress if it wasn't who they were actually going for. That's kind of neat. That's kind of cool. Making sure it's like a work email account. But once you entered your email address, then the gimmick was that it would open up a Microsoft like Entra ID login page or what looks like one where you could click to sign in if your cookies and session is still there. And then it redirects you to a local host page that you would want to copy or they're instructing the victim copy and paste that URL so it goes back to the hacker so that they have that as their new breadcrumb and puzzle piece. What that means is that they're handing the bad actor a specific authentication token for an OAuth app. And that special code then allows the attacker to connect this app to the victim's Microsoft 365 tenant and get the cookies, credentials, session tokens, realistically refresh token and access token that could then be used as cookies to get into their entire Microsoft online environment. We're talking your email inbox and Outlook. We're talking Microsoft Teams to chat with your coworkers. We're talking OneDrive, SharePoint, all the things. All of that from a little cutesy little click fix technique. Hey, I'm gonna keep us cruising to do some demos coming up next, but real quick before we do, please let me take just a quick moment to tell you about the sponsor of today's video. Hex rays. Reverse engineering is hard. State-of-the-art binary code analysis tools like IDA make it a little less painful and a lot more powerful. IDA enables you to disassemble, decompile, and debug any application you're up against. It helps you dig into how software works under the hood, whether it's malware, firmware, proprietary software, or anything. And the Hex rays decompiler is available on 11 different platforms between x86, x64, ARM, PowerPC, MIPS, and more. These analysis tools help you cut up code, unpack and deobfuscate threats, investigate exploits, cheats and game hacks, binary bugs and vulnerabilities. And IDA version 9 takes things even further. With faster saves with smaller IDB databases, expanded processor support for Tricore, RISC-V, and RH850, and smarter decompilers across ARM64, PowerPC, Rust, Swift, 
and Golang. You'll get clearer C++ exception handling, STL structure recognition, Flirt signature improvements, and even a dedicated microcode viewer to peek into the decompiler's internals. With the brand new plugin manager, HCLI, the open source Python API, headless processing with Ida Lib, and seamless team collaboration features, Ida gives you the latest innovations to stay ahead of modern threats. Ida doesn't just decompile, it gives you interactive control to dive into binaries, annotate, patch, and script your own workflows. And thanks to our channel partner Hexrays, we have a special promotion just for our channel. You can use code HAMMOND50 for 50% off any Ida Pro product, or code HAMMOND30 for 30% off any Ida Pro online training. Offer expires one year after this video release date with more details below in the video description. Make reverse engineering easy with the ultimate analysis tools from Hexrays. Disassemble, decompile, and debug with Ida. You can get started with my link below in the video description. jh.live slash hex dash rays. Huge thanks to Hexrays for sponsoring this video. So they have a video here to really see this and visualize it, but I'll talk through it because it's realistically basically the same as ClickFix. You click, oh, I'm not a robot in this setup, in this scenario, enter your email address, and they're just showing, you know, demonstrating, oh, this setup has it constrained, so it's going to validate its specific account or some online business corporate domain. Or then, once it finally has that connected or is verifying, once you have given away your email address thinking you're signing back in, then it has a cutesy little animation to show you, look, a page will open up and you've got to copy that local host URL and then enter it. If you weren't signed in already, it'll have you reprompt to go through multi-factor authentication and all. The gimmick is this is all going to real Microsoft. It is a legitimate Microsoft login and it's all in your browser. So let's dive in a little bit more tactically, like actually how this is done. They're talking about OAuth shenanigans via Azure CLI. Normally, the well-established techniques or different attack vectors for initial access or an initial foothold in a cloud Microsoft 365 environment are with like device code phishing or OAuth consent grant attacks. We're talking specifically about these OAuth consent grant attacks. Normally, they trick a victim into connecting a malicious external app into their tenant. And we've covered that illicit consent grant attack or malicious OAuth app attack vector before on the channel. Oh, what was I doing with that background? What is, what is that? The thing is, typically that attack technique requires you putting your hacker hat on, acting as the offensive security specialist, ethical hacker, penetration tester here. When you create a rogue app, you create that in your own separate external Microsoft 365 tenant. Then you're given a client ID or client secret, and that is what you'll end up hooking up to your own server, your own infrastructure. You, acting as the adversary, set up all this infrastructure and then fish the victim and have them accept and connect your app. Look at some of the setup that usually goes into that. You'll end up creating the permissions that are necessary for the application. You'll have to connect that client ID, client secret, blah, blah, blah. You get those back and forth from the Azure portal and then you prepare your server to perform this technique. So in contrast to that, that's a part of why this consent fix idea is pretty slick. Azure CLI is a first party Microsoft app and it's implicitly trusted in Entra ID and it doesn't need anyone to end up clicking, oh, I accept or approve these permissions. These first party Microsoft official apps like Azure CLI are trusted by default in all tenants. They can request permissions without admin approval and they can't be deleted or blocked. That's pretty cool. And to connect these dots for you, when we're talking about the Azure CLI, we're talking about the simple command line AZ that could be installed, but you might have to pull it down. Here, I've got a VM that it's installed on. You could use WinGet or whatever you end up doing to install that, but then AZ is just a command line client for the ability to easily manage your Azure Active Directory or now Entra ID. Look at this cutesy little ASCII art. It is the cool new Azure CLI. You could log into your account, manage the Graph API and a whole lot of the other bells and whistles behind the scenes for the cloud environment. 
we could do something like AZ login and that will end up prompting us to log into our Microsoft account. And we could do this just kind of, oh, walking through the steps here. But notice this Azure sign-in display. We could do this with a device code, use device code, and that will then give us a specific unique code to open a specific Microsoft URL. We've covered that in another video, but it's really just like sort of Netflix or Amazon style thing connecting to like a television, that concept, and then it will end up connecting accounts. Device code does give you notification though of what you're doing. If I were to click and connect to this, it'll be like, hey, are you sure you wanna do that? Make sure you trust it. And then it'll get all the info as needed. But we're not talking about the device code fish. We're talking about an OAuth application and Azure CLI. But the consent fix technique isn't even using the Azure CLI, like literally typing the AZ command on the command line. No, it's using the same sort of requests, HTTP communication between the real online Microsoft environment so that it could realistically genuinely log in to the Microsoft account. It's just using this trusted first party known and legitimate application as the fingerprints that let it through the door. Now, what I mean by that HTTP communication, because all this is realistically just interacting with an API, like trying to talk to a website, Microsoft Online, this is the URL that they're basically preparing. And when they ask you to enter your email, type in, oh, what account are you trying to sign back into? It's already prepared with the specific client ID for the Azure CLI app. And I think the resource string just as well. You could say, hey, I, we're maybe filling in to log in as Joe, uh, John Hammond on Microsoft.com. Now, because I've pre-prepared that email, let me open up a private window. I could go ahead and paste in that, but it will already know, okay, look, you're trying to sign in to this specific account. Clicking into this, it would prompt for our password, do regular multi-factor authentication as for a legitimate, genuine sign-in. But let me get back over to that virtual machine that we were playing in where I did have uh, another M365 account ready for us. Let me open a new tab and let me get to that same URL. Joe, as the victim user, is a real thing. So we just need that address and URL. Once I click to sign in, you see something weird going on though? It redirects me to localhost. Now this is exactly what we would expect to have happen in a real legitimate OAuth app sort of server and implementation, right? You're connecting, like you're developing an app to work with Entra ID. It's just authenticating and giving you the token that code that's provided here. That's the secret sauce, and that's what the threat actor is asking for. This is why you see the push security write-up include this uh, burp suite screenshot with this login.microsoftonline URL, because that's real legitimate Microsoft login. But once they've clicked that button, once they have signed in, and it sends them to localhost, that big long code is what they, the threat actor then asks for, copy paste that in. And now some of you, myself included, reading through this, I was really thinking, who's gonna fall for this? Who would do this? And I know some people would, but this back and forth, copy paste localhost, that looks clunky to me. I feel like there is a lot of friction in the <laughs> social engineering user experience. You know what I mean? The gimmick here though, that I don't think I did a good enough job explaining was that, look, this URL, once they've entered their email and that gets funneled along to the end user, they don't have to, if they already have a session and cookies established for them getting their work done, answering their emails, already being logged in to Azure and Entra ID, they don't need to enter their username, password, do the multi-factor authentication crap. They just click and then they give away their account. Well, not their account, but now access to that environment. So again, I am nerd sniped by this. I think the idea is wild to bridge from the endpoint or even, oh, you know, classic cutesy phishing that's not even phishing. This could just be any web page out and about across the internet as you're flipping through pages and websites. And then a couple clicks, then you've stolen a cloud environment. Like that's bonkers. So I had to play with it. I wanted to try and recreate it and see it in action and see what I could tweak and tune. So I'm gonna play a video for you because I wanted to show you what I had put together. This is just a short little cutesy demonstration, proof of concept, but over on the left-hand side in the terminal here, that's where I'm gonna be starting up our little server just to host and prepare our landing page or like the phishing website web page 
lure all on its own. I open that up, I just host it, and it's index.html, but here's the little premise here. Microsoft page says, hey, we're sorry, you need to sign in again to access this resource. Now that's probably totally normal, right? Maybe we're used to, oh, the re-sign in, re-auth SSO stuff that it always tends to be. Whatever we're using Microsoft, but look, it pops up in an opening sign in window and the cookies and cash is already there. So the victim just clicks sign in. Now you can't track what happens in this pop-up. So I just had to try and time it or add a little bit of delay so that look, if you see this weird error, and I think we do need to smooth over that user experience. Oh, you're having trouble? If you see an error, the site can't be reached, then I don't want you to have to copy and paste. That feels too clunky. Why not just drag it? You could drag the icon or that URL right into the box to complete sign in. And just like that, you can see it over on the left hand side, all of the refresh token, access token, keys to the kingdom for that environment with a tiny little Azure CLI OAuth app just added in. And we could do whatever else we wanted to do from there. But you're keeping up the ruse. The page says, oh yeah, you've successfully signed in. Let's redirect you. But the damage is done with just, what is it? Two steps, three steps, drag something in. <laughs> I think it's cool. Like, I know I'm wearing my hacker hat right now, but the copy paste of like the thin line in the address bar, localhost port 8400, like that just looks a little bit sketch. So we could smooth over that experience by the cutesy little drag and drop. And if we were thinking, you know, maybe make a landing page where it's a little bit more in line because they use a video, like they, they had this animation of click, copy this. It'd be pretty slick if the Microsoft prompt for click the account you want to log into or log in here were in line embedded within the page, like an iframe, but Microsoft doesn't let you do that. It's got to be a pop out. It's got to be a pop up or another tab, but then cross origin policy or same origin policy won't let you see what's happening in the URL bar. You don't know the context of that new loose iframe or pop up, right? more specifically. So you don't know, you can't programmatically tell with JavaScript as to when they completed it, if they went to localhost. And even then, if they see localhost and it gives them this site cannot be reached error, that also looks weird. So we wanna smooth that over and say, oh, if you're having trouble, oh, you could finish your secure sign in, ha <laughs> ha. The drag and drop works just as well as copy and paste for the victim to voluntarily give up that OAuth code. And then we, the server, the phishing site, ends up making the request to Microsoft to go ahead and finish that app registration, letting us in the door to their cloud environment. But if I take my hacker hat off now and start to think a little bit more, uh, well, yeah, this looks a little damning because there are no endpoint artifacts. This happens entirely in your web browser. Thinking this through, right, you connect to a phishing page to start, you enter your email into that phishing page, it opens another pop-up for the Microsoft login, you drag in a gesture, and then the damage is done. The only thing you have to key off of there is your browser history. Maybe you could go find and track down when you went to the login Microsoft kind of component piece. Hitting that URL on the history is a, one artifact. In, is there a, like a log or record? Is there a forensic artifact of what you drag and drop? <laughs> I don't know, genuinely I'm asking. Let me know in the comments if you got something. And then we're talking about the first party trusted legitimate Azure CLI app. So that you can't particularly make go away, but the logs that you might see in Azure, like within Entra, you could see maybe login events with the application, Microsoft Azure CLI and Azure Resource Manager. But the thing is that could just as easily be real legitimate actual use of the Azure CLI, not malicious. They got a little bit more tactical details in the write-up and article, so I will link that in the video description for you, but I just thought this one was wild. Like this is the lowest lift opportunity from any website, any endpoint, like it doesn't even need a phishing email because this can just be cast about and then get into a cloud environment, Microsoft 365 Entra ID all via click fix. I don't know, I feel like it can't even be consent fix because you don't even get to deal with or see a usual OAuth permission chart. They just give you an easy one click and you're in. I feel like it's like Entra fix or <laughs> there's gotta be some other way, way to capture and name that. Let me know what you think. I don't know if you're playing with something like this. I don't know if this is spooking you, scaring you, giving you the heebie-jeebies, but uh, look, it's a matter of knowing that that threat is out there and that's how it could be done. 
That's it. That's the end of the video. I've been talking for too long. Thanks so much. I love you. See you in the next one. Bye.